Hey YouTube. YouTube! So this is officially our fourth video, which means we've been doing this for almost a month. And that means that next week will be the kids' turn, where they're going to be doing a monthly rewind. So it will be the kids' opportunity to impress you with all their knowledge of the past month's events. Can you believe it's been a month already? No, it's like but... The time just like flew by. It's very hard to believe it's been a month, but we've really enjoyed all the interactions and the people with the comments down below. It's been great. So continue to keep making those comments and keep bringing up topics for us to talk about because we really do enjoy hearing from you guys. But first, before we <clears> go <throat> on, we want to send a big shout out to our friend Clyde. Thor? Who, yes. Thor many, no more? Many of you might remember from, I think it was actually our second official Big Gay Vacation, he went along with us and he got the name Thor because he had these flowing golden locks. He, he looked, cut them off. Yeah, he did. And I'm not really a guy who likes long hair on men, so I never really thought he was that good looking of a guy, but Damn! When the hair got cut off, he got all of a sudden more attractive. Did you really just say that out loud? Yeah. What, is, what is it about long hair that makes men less attractive? I, don't, I, I, I don't think know it's what that just is. for you. I is think, it just for me? I think it's just you. Yeah. <laughs> when a guy has long hair, I'm just like, whatever. But as soon as they have short hair, I just all of a sudden think they're cute. I don't, I don't know what it but is. But hi, Clyde. Your haircut looks awesome. Yeah, it looks great. You look really good with short hair. So yeah. uh, come on our next BGV because we want to see you with short hair. <laughs> So next up would be politics. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I struggled a little bit on how to frame this one because it's a little bit bigger than just one issue. And I guess it's best sort of framed when Michelangelo or, yeah, Michelangelo Signorelli, who's a, a national radio host, kind of called out LGBT leadership for not standing up against things like the effort in Arkansas to ban LGBT non-discrimination ordinances. And basically saying that, you know, since marriage equality has advanced and we have so many big victories on the table now, LGBT leadership has kind of fallen asleep. So I don't, I don't know if they've fallen asleep. I think that sometimes that, you know, they really are in their whole raising money kind mm -hmm. of phase and they're not really focused on what's actually happening. So they're more concerned about, you know, getting their coffers full and they're actually about, you know, fighting all these different things that are going on across the country, is well, my personal opinion. We have a lot to celebrate in all the marriage equality victories, but there's a big pushback that's well, happening. Well, besides Arkansas, I mean, there's, Oklahoma's probably the worst of the bunch, and you've got Alabama, and you've got all these states now that are passing laws that obviously are, are not federally legally, or they're not legal, federally legally, legal, federally? Yeah. Something so, like that. you know, you've got Oklahoma passing laws basically saying that, that spouses can't visit their sp their partners in hospitals. You've got Alabama saying that they're going to end marriage for all couples, including Texas you know, wants to LGBT. invalidate the one marriage that yeah. they have there, even though it basically was because one of the partners was suffering from cancer and yeah. wanted to... Have but it's cancer. just ridiculous. And to be honest with you, the federal laws supersede the state laws. And a lot of these states, you know, they, they siphon off money from the federal government. And if the federal government would just start enforcing, basically stop sending money to these states, if they start passing laws like this, which are illegal, I think you'd see a lot of these states knock it off. But now on to the important topic of Walking Dead. I actually have my shirt on, my Walking Dead shirt, so this isn't just like, you know, ketchup all over it. Um, he wore that to Disneyland one time. Can you imagine the looks we got from Yeah, no, Brian gave me lots of nasty looks for wearing it. <coughs> I bought it at Disneyland. Mm -hmm. So if you buy a shirt at Disneyland, you can wear it at Disneyland. They were holding it, like... No. Don't look so legitimate. for all you Walking Dead fans, finally we have a gay character. And as you guys know, I mean, if you've read the Walking Dead novels, there are tons of gay characters in the comic books, but yet there has not been a single gay character on the TV show. So a lot of people are starting to get kind of bugged. Why is The Walking Dead being homophobic? Because they're not putting these gay characters in the TV series that were in the comic book. And then there was a little bit of rumors that they would be making the badass uh, redneck on the show a gay character. Like he would be prison gay, whatever that really means. I guess, you know, if he finds a guy attractive. You're, you're, you're a deputy sheriff and well, you work in prison. Well, prison gay, you know prison prison gay, gay means. means that it's a straight person that has <laughs> sex with men when there's no women around. That doesn't really work for the show because there are tons of women around and there were women that liked him that he hasn't really been attracted to. And it's not so, exactly gay affirming to be prison gay. Well, I mean, I guess if you're gay and the guy's being prison gay with you, it's kind of gay affirming. But finally, we have a gay character. Take a look at this picture. So he's cute and he seems like not stereotypical, which is great because a lot of time TV shows love to stereotypes. You know, I mean, although I wouldn't mind having like a transgender character on The Walking Dead. I think that'd be kind of cool. Um, it'd be nice to see some, you know, realistic 
personas of gay characters. And so tonight, if you guys are watching The Walking Dead, I hope that you get a look at this new character and let me know what you think, because I'm actually looking forward to see how he is portrayed on the show. Now that we've got Walking Dead out of the way, what the other big entertainment thing that's going on? It's the Gay Super Bowl, otherwise known as the, the Oscars. Oscars. And I'm actually not watching the Oscars this year. I kind of have lost interest in the Oscars ever since they made it from, like, what was it, five movies to 20 for Best Picture. You know, I think they're really overdoing it. I think the best part of the Oscars this year would be probably Neil Patrick Harris because he is hosting and he's pretty awesome. You know, the reason why I don't watch the Oscars is because the people I want never win. That's why. You haven't watched any of the movies that have been nominated this year. Yeah, we used to watch them all. We made a point yeah. of going when to see When there was five movies <laughs> Oscars, we would go see all five movies. But we're not watching 20 movies, okay? We're not going to go see 20 movies. Yeah. So, But we'd like to know who your best picks are for the Oscars I this year. I think the only picture I saw this year was the American Assassin. Mm-hmm. Or uh, American Sniper. American <laughs> Sniper. He's awesome, and the movie was awesome, and it's a really cool story. And for all you people who would bag on him, boo. I mean, <laughs> he is a hero, and he's dead, so can you stop picking on him? So is that your pick for Best Picture? Yeah, because it's the only one I've seen. So I hope it wins Best Picture. What What else is nominated? A bunch of, a bunch of Art House right. films. The Fox Catcher, I think, <gasps> was one of Our them. phone's ringing, so ignore the ringing tone in the background. We'll just be quiet for a moment. Okay, so the last topic this week has to do with a family that has actually taken a child that we used to foster. And they are Levi and Tyler. And I'm not sure if you guys know much about them, but they're a really sweet gay couple. And they've actually taken one of the little kids that we had in our household Mm -hmm. and they're actually going to adopt him and we still can't say his name technically yet but we can send our congratulations and but well that's not where i'm going with this okay next month in march they will be having their official adoption day which is an amazing day for them and i'm actually hoping that they will let me film it and show it on our youtube channel because it's one of those moments that i think is great when we can capture it Mm -hmm. but sadly one of their fathers actually has colon cancer and he is terminal and they are trying to raise some money for him to basically grant his last wish, which was going to a certain baseball game. I'm not exactly sure which baseball. I think it's in Boston. Mm-hmm. But they're trying to raise money because he doesn't have much longer on this planet. And he is a very, very sweet man who has supported his son in their coming out process and their adoption of their son. And it moved me. They did a write-up on one of the uh, sites that raises money for different campaigns. And I'd like to share that campaign with you guys. And if you can, you know, anywhere from 10 to 15 to $20, if you can donate to this cause, I think it would mean a lot to an LGBT family. It would mean a lot to their father, and it would mean a lot to us if you guys were able to do that. And 100, 100 bucks would get them to about where? This, well, everybody gives 100 bucks. Poughkeepsie? No, I'd be happy if everybody gave 10 bucks. <laughs> so whatever, if you can give, I mean, if you're financially hurting, don't give. But if you can give, it would be a nice cause to donate to. Um, I think that's where we'll wrap it up. Until next time, YouTube. Bye. bye.